I'm Pam Martin, the Education Specialist for KDWPT here at the Kansas Wetlands Education Center. And we're out in the marsh at Cheyenne Bottoms. You can hear the birds singing. Unfortunately, you can hear some cars going through too. But um, I just got done sampling in the marsh. And when I say sampling, what I mean is I've gone out with a strainer. This is something you have at home, but don't use it unless you ask your mother or your father, okay? Um, and you just go through vegetation along the water, in the shallow water. That's why I've only got uh, knee-high boots on. That's all you need. And you scoop up through the water, along the vegetation, and then you let the water drain out, and you look and see what you've got inside. What we're looking for is something called macro invertebrates. Now, macro is the opposite of micro. And micro means what? Tiny, right? So tiny that you need a microscope. So macro would mean larger, something you can see with your eyes. Now, a lot of these little animals are small. You can see them with your eyes. Now, invertebrate means what? What's vertebrate? What's vertebra? It's your spine, right? Your backbone. So invertebrate would be an animal without a backbone. So these are animals that we can see with our eyes that don't have a backbone. Here we have some of the animals that we found in the marsh. You can see there's quite a size variation. I'm going to use the tweezers here and show you. This one is the largest one. Anybody have any idea what that animal might be? These are pretty, they're fantastical creatures, aren't they? What lives under the water. Um, also over here we've got, maybe that's a pretty familiar animal for some of you. Okay, and the other thing that you're going to want if you do this on your own, not on your own with a parent or a grandparent, um, is something, a, a jar to put bigger animals in. Okay, so now we're going to go in and see um, what we caught on the document camera, which will make everything look larger so you can get a really good look at it. Okay, here we go. Insect macroinvertebrates go through life cycles, one of which is called incomplete metamorphosis, in which it's an egg, nymph, and adult. And they just molt between each one, like a grasshopper. Here's an example of their life cycle. Then there's complete metamorphosis, where there's four stages, egg, larva, pupa, and adult, like a monarch butterfly. And here you can see that life cycle. Now we're going to look at a damselfly nymph. This would be incomplete metamorphosis because the nymphs molt between the stages, and the last stage is the adult with wings. And here you can see they're pretty small compared to that paper clip. Damselfly nymphs have gills on the end of their abdomen. Those three little tail-like structures take air from the water for the damselfly. You can also see the compound eyes and the six legs. In this enlargement, you can see their digestive system and also their circulatory system. The adult damselfly has wings, as you can see, but now, now you can see that actually the nymph does look somewhat like the adult. This is a whirligig beetle larva, and those hairs on the side are actually their gills that absorb or take oxygen out of the water. And if you look at the jaws, you can tell that, wow, they probably do eat other animals. Um, they use an air bubble, the, the adults do, um, instead of gills. And we'll get to an adult beetle here in a second. Whirly gig beetles have the big, long front legs, and they spin around in circles really, really quickly. What's really cool is they have two compound eyes, one above the water and one under the water, to help them better hunt their prey. Now, we do have um, charts to ID these animals, and they're called dichotomous keys. This is a mayfly nymph. And we're going to look on the chart here. Do you notice it has three tails? Well, the chart will go and ask you questions. Do they have legs? Um, do they have tails? 
And we already saw that the damselfly nymph has tails, but they're different, aren't they? They're wider. The mayfly nymph has narrow tails, and that's how you can tell them apart. And also, if you look really carefully on the back of the mayfly, on the abdomen there, you can see some gills. And this is showing you the chart. This is an adult mayfly, and actually, they don't have mouth parts because they only live two to three days. Here's a dragonfly nymph. Same life cycle as the damselfly, um, and their gills are on the back of the abdomen. Now, what we're gonna do here is show you the mouth part of the dragonfly nymph because it's really cool. It's hinged. And what I'm doing, I just flipped him over and I've got a, a needle and I'm gonna pull that mouth part out so that you can see it. It's actually their lip. And what they do is they wait until a little fish or another macroinvertebrate goes by and they unhinge that, scoop up the prey and bring it to their jaws so they can eat it. The adult dragonfly uses its legs like a basket and sweeps prey out of the um, air. Here we have a fly larva. A lot of flies like deer flies and horse flies lay their eggs in water and so their larva hatch out in the water and eat other aquatic insects. Some of them also eat dead material. And you can see how he's got um, the tip of his abdomen up at the surface of the water, and he's got two spiracles there that take air um, in and go through his um, body. And then his little piercing mouth part there that you can see. Now we have two mosquito larvae. They have huge heads, don't they? And the bristles on the tips of, of, of their head are used to stir the water and bring in materials that they can eat, like algae and other types of um, food. And they move their bodies, they bend their bodies to move. Water boatmen are true bugs. Um, they row with their legs, kind of like the whirligig beetle, to go in the water, to move in the water. They actually suck plant juices from algae and other water plants, which is unusual for the beetles and the bugs. Most of them are carnivorous. This is a water scorpion, one of our largest um, <clears throat> macroinvertebrates. They grab prey with their front legs and then eat it, pierce it with the piercing mouth part. And there you can see it. And then on the tip of their abdomen, they have what looks like a stinger, but it's actually an oxygen tube that they take up to the surface of the water and get oxygen. Now we're going to look at some non-insect macroinvertebrates. This little guy is called a scud or a sidewinder. They're related to shrimp, they're a crustacean, and they have um, five or seven pairs of legs and help them move through the water. They eat mostly um, dead plant material and, and dead animals that are in the water. They spin around. And this one is probably one that you've seen before, the crayfish, another crustacean that has five pairs of legs, including the large claws at the front. They have swimmerettes that help them swim and move water over their gills. And then of course there's snails. This snail is sliding on his foot, that's how he moves. And those things that look like antenna are actually eye stalks. They don't see very well, just light and dark. They eat algae that they scrape off of rocks and other things like that. Included on the identification key is the benthic scale of macroinvertebrates that assigns a rating to each type of macroinvertebrate depending upon their sensitivity to pollutants. Rated from one to 10 with one being very tolerant and 10 being very sensitive. The snail we just looked at is rated at one, very tolerant. The mayfly is rated at nine, very sensitive. So if there are a lot of snails and other tolerant species, 
but no mayflies or sensitive species, it would indicate pollutants. This is one tool that environmental scientists use to determine water quality in bodies of water like lakes, rivers, and wetlands. Now we're going to look at a couple of my favorite animals, macroinvertebrates that is. This is a water mite and they're so cute. They spin around in circles and uh, they're actually an arthropod. They're related to scorpions and spiders. They have eight legs and the, um, the red color indicates that they taste bad. This is a flatworm or planaria. Actually there are three in here. They have what looks like it's a triangular shaped head. And as you watch them move around in the bowl, um, you'll see those eye spots. They only see light and dark. And they move along a mucus that they produce. And then underneath their body are these cilia, little hairs that move along the um, mucus. If you would split their head or split their tail, they will regenerate two heads or two tails. The scientists have studied their regenerative properties for many years. So here you can watch them move because they're just so cool to watch them slide around in the water. There you can get a really good look at those eye spots. Very primitive organisms. Wetlands are second only to rainforests in the diversity of organisms living there. And most of those organisms are macroinvertebrates. Shorebirds, pictured here, fly thousands of miles during spring and fall migrations, stopping at wetlands like Cheyenne Bottoms to feed and rest. I hope you get to visit a wetland soon to see for yourself the wonders of wetlands.